As a wildlife and landscape photographer, I need cameras that are reliable with top performance. Now, three years ago, I was using a pair of these Sony A6400s for all my stills work and also all my video shooting. But now, in 2024, I still regularly use this camera, even though the camera has been superseded a number of times by newer models since its release in early 2019. Now in this video I'm going to tell you why this little gem of a camera remains part of my lineup and why it could be part of yours and that's whatever genre of photography that you're shooting. So what is the Sony A6400? Well it's a small form crop sensor mirrorless camera and it boasts a 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor. It has 425 point phase detection autofocus and it will shoot at an impressive 11 frames a second. Now on the video side it's capable of 4K video and it will also shoot 1080p at 120 frames a second which creates a lovely slow motion for your footage. Now that's just some of the highlights of this fantastic little camera and I'll list a full specification in the description below and I'll also scroll it up the side of this video here while you're watching. But why do I rate this camera so highly in 2024? Well here's my reasons that you might want to own this camera. So firstly as a wildlife camera this little gem really does pack a punch. You know even five years from its launch it remains no slouch against the current cameras on the market. Now for me it falls nicely into that sweet spot of performance and price. Now sure it won't give you everything that the new Sony A9 Mark III or the rumoured A1 Mark II will bring to the table. But you know you'll be spending less than 10% of the price for a like new used model of this camera. For most of us the price of those new models is prohibitive or just not practical. I also have a theory that there is a price point where the camera you buy matches or exceeds your current skill level as a photographer. So what this means is that you'd likely gain much more improvement by spending more time out with your camera, you know, shooting and learning different methods and learning from other photographers etc. than you will by upgrading to a new camera that's got many many more features. So many of the flagship model cameras are nice to have and will give some improvement but not a sufficient amount to justify the cost in my opinion. I've taken some of my favourite images over the last few years with the Sony A6400 and it's the rare that I've ever thought you know, I would have done better with a different model. So shooting 11 frames per second isn't generally more than enough for about 90% of the situations you'll be in as a wildlife photographer. Now in fact I recently tested out a camera that shot at 50 frames per second and I found that in many situations I just filled up the cards with identical images leading to more time sat in front of the computer wading through them which is something that I definitely do not like doing. Now for photographers who are looking for a really lightweight wildlife setup this is something I've recommended to a few people on my channel is something like the A6400 with the Sigma 100-400 lens. Both are very very lightweight but both are capable of some stunning images and you won't be disappointed. So for the landscape photographers out there this camera doesn't disappoint either. It's more than capable of shooting epic landscapes and I still use it in a lot of situations where particularly if I'm hiking out into the mountains you know especially if I'm wild camping up there as well I'll have limited space for camera gear and if I pair this camera with something like the Sony 18-135, I can take everything up there in one camera and one lens and I've got everything for the wide shots as well as those telephoto images that often work you know, really well in the high mountains where you're compressing all that mountain scenery. Now it's often mentioned that if you're doing landscape photography you need a full frame camera. But do you really? I mean I don't think so unless you're creating an image to be blown up you know, to the size of a wall then the Sony A6400 will produce stunning images at all the sizes most of us print at. Now from what I've said above, if you're a travel photographer, this is a fantastic camera to take with you, especially paired with something like the Sony 18135 that I mentioned above. It's a really powerful option that will lend itself to most of the situations that you're going to get into. And I think for travel photographers and filmmakers, this camera as a base for your setup would be incredibly versatile. 
Now not to be forgotten are a couple of the main reasons I went for the A6400 initially and ended up getting two of them and that's the fact that the A6400 has an input for an external microphone. Now as a content creator you soon learn that the sound quality for your video comes a very close second to the images and the film itself. So using the camera's onboard microphones really just doesn't cut it in most situations. I often use a shotgun microphone or microphones like these DJI mics here that I'm using today to raise the level of the sound quality. And you know, the A6400 was I think the first in the series to be able to do that. The second reason is the A6400 is also the first of the A6000 range to have a fully flip over screen. Now it doesn't go around the side, it comes over the top like this. Now as a content creator again, it won't be very long before you've if you've not got that facility that you realise that when you've done a couple of segments of film and they've come out perfectly, you go around to look and review the footage and find that you've chopped the top of your head off. Um, it only has to, has to happen to you a couple of times before you, yeah, you realise the value of having that flip over screen. So who is this camera aimed at in 2024? Well I think this camera is still suitable for many photographers. And if you're a beginner or an intermediate photographer, this camera is more than enough to start or even continue your photography journey. And it will perform very well in most photography situations. Now a caveat to that would be if you're an advanced photographer who's maybe specialised in a particular area or genre, there are going to be better cameras out there to fulfil your needs. However, obviously they are going to come at a price. Now as for me, why have I still got the A6400? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, it does the jobs I want it to do. It's more than capable still of fulfilling that backup camera role for me and also being the number one camera in certain situations. But the other thing about it is it, it's such a good camera. Occasionally when you're a photographer, you come across a camera and even though it's been superseded, even though you know, maybe other cameras do more, and there are certainly cameras in this range that do more than this one. You just have an affinity with it, and you know, you feel like the manufacturer really hit the spot with a certain camera. And for me, the A6400 is that camera, and it's one that I'd be loath to get rid of. Um, I still en enjoy using it to this day, and that's why it remains part of my kit. So I hope this video has been useful to you. This is definitely an option that you need to look at if you're looking for your first camera or want a camera that is not going to break the bank but is not going to be a hindrance to you in any particular form of photography. Take a look at this camera, um, put it alongside the others of a similar age and a similar type and you know I don't think you'll be disappointed. As for me, I'll be keeping hold of mine because I absolutely love it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you have, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And if you've not subscribed, then think about subscribing to the channel. I'll see you soon for another one. Bye.